Today on Grand Thumb. How to survive an ambush, whether you are a professional soldier, whether you are a amateur airsofter, it doesn't matter. Knowing how to react to an ambush is going to be vitally important. So I hope you will stay tuned as today we talk about how to survive an ambush. Now, before we get into it, we of course have to thank the biggest sponsor of the channel. Charlie, who is the biggest sponsor of the channel? The Sonoran Desert Institute. A big thank you to them if you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing. They are the people to go to. We can't thank them enough. And of course, we have to thank who, Micah? Primary Arms for the sickest optics on the block and more. And they include popcorn with every order. Can we say that? Sure. I be, be prepared, Primary Arms. A big thank you to them. Uh, we can't thank them enough. Ladies, gentlemen, my often forgotten, but most certainly not by me, LOAs. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to survive that ambush and to help us, we of course have Adam from Spiritus Systems. Adam, thank you so much for coming in today, dude. Hey man, thanks for having me. I appreciate you. So, uh, I don't want to like steal your thunder or anything, man, so if you want to explain to the audience who you are and, yeah. and everything. Yeah, Yeah, sure. So, uh, my name's Adam. I'm uh, one of the owners of Spiritus Systems. We produce tactical nylon equipment. Very, very tactical. Very tactical, uh, very nylon. Uh, so you probably have heard of us. I hope you've heard of us. I've definitely seen some stuff on the channel. It's like and slow tears. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard please, about you. Please witness us. Uh, yeah, so that's what we do. We make professional, like high-end uh, quality nylon. I love it. And a bigger question is gonna be, why should they listen to you when we're talking about ambushes? Yeah, sure. So uh, I have, well, first I've survived some in real life. It's so, good. good credentials. Yeah, that's a good credential to have. Uh, but yeah, I was army. I was an infantryman in the army. Uh, spent a lot of time on the reconnaissance side. Uh, and yeah, just been through it, uh, both on the ambush side, like giving an ambush as well as receiving. So I love it, man. Well, thanks for coming on and for giving the knowledge. This is really important stuff that we sure. talk about. We, we, we joke about it, but this is actually vitally important information. So this is cool. Now, here's what you, have, you guys have to understand. Adam, how much training did you do uh, prior to even leaving the wire? Yeah, sure. So uh, you have obviously basic training, years of basic training in, in ambushes, again, both giving ambushes as well as uh, reacting to them, mm -hmm. and then rehearsals before mm -hmm. every operation. So uh, we're talking years. We're talking years, and years. we're talking uh, hours and hours of, you know, maybe in one day, you're just maybe a whole day of just react, react to ambush. I've spent weeks just yep. practicing react to ambushes sure. or, or pre planning how to do them. So you have to understand that in this 25, this 30, however long this video is, we cannot even close to get you prepared for reacting to an ambush. This is a primer. You have to understand that you actually have to go out and practice this stuff. And I would definitely encourage you to go out and get training from uh, different entities that teach us, whether it be Darcy or whoever, or us in the very near future. So go out and actually practice, get that training, get with your boys and do it. And another part of this is that this information isn't like protected information. The army manuals are free. Nobody wants to know, wants you to know this, but you can have as many as yeah, you, you want. you can take as many it's as you want. 800 army manuals. Download them, read them, understand them. That's gonna make you better at stuff. Now with that being said, Let's get into it. Adam, what is an ambush? Yeah, sure. So an ambush is, uh, you know, one military element uh, exploiting another military element, usually using surprise mm -hmm. is the biggest factor generally, uh, terrain, things like that um, to basically take it, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an operation of murder. You're trying to basically exact as many casualties on an enemy force, completely envelop them, crush them, and eliminate them from the battle space. There you have it. And there are many different types, whether you're completely crushing, there's also simple harassment. Yeah, you're sure. simply trying to, if uh, an element is trying to gather up to do an attack, you're harassing these elements as they're coming up. Ambushes are, there are so many facets to them. Now, when we're talking about them, there's kind of two main that you kind of run into. You have a hasty and you have a plan. So a hasty is, would be you're out patrolling, another guy's out patrolling, he sees you before you see him, and he's able to set up in an area that he thinks you're gonna get into because he's watching your direction of travel. And because of that, you walk right into his line of fire, his kill zone, what we call it, and you're in a really bad position. We also have a plan, if you'd like to speak to that. Yeah, sure, so any anytime we, uh, do a planned ambush, uh, it's very deliberate. We're, we're gonna select when and where 
uh, and we're gonna choose you know, all the key terrain that we're gonna utilize and we're gonna exploit every single uh, weakness that we can to try to, again, to completely uh, decimate an enemy force. Uh, so planned, you know, a planned ambush by nature comes with a lot of uh, pre-mission mm -hmm. planning, rehearsals, training, uh, you know, contingencies, all of those things. And the reason we're talking about how you would conduct these as well is to understand how to react to them. So for example, if we're talking about you and the boys are trying to defend the property, defend a nation, do whatever, and every day at 5 a.m. you wake up, you all gear up, and you take the same route at sure. 7 a.m. every day. That is a bad idea because people are gonna be able to get intel on that, the locals are gonna know, um, if they are able to get eyes on you, they're gonna know your exact route, when you're taking it, and they're gonna be able to set up and just put you in a really bad position. So you have to understand that you have to be smart about this. You have to think <laughs> before you're able to do things. So for example, uh, we have this road right here. Traveling a road is nice. I love traveling a road, but I know that during my military training that stepping onto a road during an exercise felt like- uh, yeah, It feels gross. Fe yeah, it feels like stepping on a dick. It, yeah, it feels wrong. really wrong. It's wrong. You shouldn't do it. So yeah. understanding these basic things, which we'll be speaking to is going to be important. Now, today we're gonna to be getting into both a near ambush and a far ambush, which are kind of your two main components of them. Um, it's easier to show them rather than it is to talk about sure. them. So we're gonna get out there, we're gonna show you what those both sound like and look like. It's gonna do it. Yeah, let's do it. So when we talk about a near ambush, we're talking about what's within grenade range. So if somebody initiates an ambush and they're close enough to huck a grenade at you, you're gonna have a much different decision point on how you're going to handle that ambush. So in this case, we're gonna show you what that it's going to look like. Charlie. Well, that is a really bad day if that were a grenade and we're gonna see how far he is. So generally we're looking at approximately 25 to 35 meters. Now, sometimes you're gonna get a guy out there who just can just, he's got like a real arm, can really hook that. But generally that's what we're gonna look at. Now, what's the problem with being within grenade range? Well, when we talk about ambushes, when we're, uh, when we're within grenade range, we, uh, we have very few decisions that can be made. Uh, they can basically throw explosives onto us. All of our, any defilade that we have or any cover that we might be able to exploit can just be counteracted by uh, hand grenades. So we definitely are gonna make a decision based on that. And you might be saying to yourself, How, who's gonna have hand grenades? Explosives aren't hard to make, guys. Certainly. So don't underestimate anybody. So when it comes to this range and this situation, you have two decision points. You're either going to die or you're going to assault back and assault through them. Those are the only two things that you're really able to do in this particular situation. Obviously in urban, you might be able to get away or in certain situations, sure. but here generally kind of army style near ambush, you're going to assault through them. Yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a great example of initiative based tactics. So, you know, if you're, again, if you're, if you're rehearsed, you've trained, you know you're within hand grenade range, it's, that initiative is gonna kick in for the individual and you're going to uh, start, you know, assaulting through uh, pretty much on your own or in your buddy team, whatever you can. Most likely in this situation, this is kind of the classic, what people think of with an ambush, the casualty rate right off the bat is gonna be very high. Uh, yeah. So you may be the lone survivor kind of just assaulting through yourself. The idea is to crush through the enemy ambush line uh, so that you can create confusion and free yourself from the kill zone is what we're trying to do. Essentially. essentially. There you go. So we're gonna go ahead and show what that looks like and sounds like at this point. Contact right!
All right, so you've seen what the near ambush is looking like. Uh, the question is precisely what happened, what did we do, what is that looking like? Because this is something that you're gonna be rehearsing time and time again. There's not gonna be a whole lot of talking going on during a near ambush because uh, you just can't hear each other. Yeah, exactly. I think something that's really overlooked, we're showing you a video today. It's a, a dramatic demonstration sure. of kind of the mechanics. Uh, but what's hard to translate is the reality of uh, gunfire, the reality of, you know, force on force. Uh, and, you know, near ambushes, I, I got into a near ambush in 2000, probably 2009 in Afghanistan. And we were on a, <clears throat> we were on a trail. We were very channelized. Uh, it was on the, it was a cut in the side of a, a mountain. So we couldn't, we couldn't avoid the high avenue of approach. We had to take it. We were in the file. Mm -hmm. uh, we were moving very fast. It was uh, our, our scout team, the sniper team, and then some uh, JSOC guys. And then we had a whole platoon of infantry trailing us at about 500 meters. Uh, we were kind of doing a movement to contact. Yeah. As we were moving, we got attacked from the high ground uh, and the fire was pretty, pretty decimating. Uh, we took pretty much everybody that night uh, came back with a Purple Heart. Mm. Luckily, we didn't take any, uh, we didn't have any KIA that night, thankfully. Uh, what, what kind of saved us was that the enemy chose uh, kind of a bad spot to initiate their ambush mm. on us, where we had, we had a very deep cut on the trail. There was like shallow parts left and right of us, but we were right in this cut, so we were able to basically get into that and start maneuvering. Uh, and we, you know, same thing that you saw here where we had, we got online and then we had another element uh, thankfully being able to move, you know, move into position and create our, you know, our V and start laying down suppressing fire from the sides. And that was, you know, a, an entire infantry platoon kind of going and displacing up the hill. And they just, you know, they basically just hammered uh, into that, into those enemy forces. But <clears throat> the feeling you get when you are stuck in the kill zone is pretty helpless. Uh, if you don't have room to maneuver, uh, you're basically just going to be taking it. Right? So the only option left is to stand up and charge and fire and hope that you can get through uh, the chaos, overwhelm them with your, with your presence, is which, you know, it's kind of what's happening here. You know? Exactly, and so like, uh, thanks for the story by the way, that was awesome. Yeah, sure. Uh, it, it's a good way, it's, it's important to kind of bring the reality to it. But in the little demonstration that we did here, essentially uh, we were taking fire from very near within about 25 meters, so what Adam did is, of course, he called the contact right for yep. a unit. And then being that we have, uh, our fire team has practiced this quite a bit, we knew what to do in the case that we needed to get into a little bit of deflate slash cover. Um, me, who is the Bra who's Bravo team, we bound it up while they provided a little bit of suppressive fire. Um, once we got up onto there, our saw gunner was in a much better location. And so in this case, we do have some type of heavy weapon being a saw. Um, to be clear, a 308 battle rifle, uh, many things can kind of take that place, sure. but somebody who has a lot, some overwhelming firepower is, is a good thing to have. So once we get online, if you want to talk about your side of it, Adam. Yeah, sure. So we saw, lucky for us, we saw the contact. Mm -hmm. We were able to call it before uh, we were initiated on. You know, their team, uh, Bravo team moved up, Alpha team supported. We moved up to the line, kind of did an assessment of what was going on, decided that utilizing the, uh, the terrain here, we, you know, this, yeah, this terrain up here, the little gully we're in, um, we were gonna need to utilize that terrain to maneuver. So I called for Alpha team to, to maneuver. We, uh, we moved behind safely and then moved up into, a, you know, again, creating that L or the V, whatever you wanna call it. We're essentially forcing the enemy forces to, the, we're forcing them into a decision point. And basically we're taking away options as much as we can. We wanna completely eliminate their ability to maneuver anymore. So we moved up into that position. The most dangerous part of us initiating an assault, right, or in a counter ambush, is the communication between the two elements now because we're disparate. Uh, a very overwhelming fire. There's only four of us here in this demonstration, but if you could imagine nine guys and most of them don't have suppressors, you're really not gonna be able to hear anything. Plus the incoming fire is unsuppressed, uh, most likely. So we, uh, you know, we pulled out a smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, a smoke is a great way. These are, they're readily available. Airsoft companies have made smokes pretty. They're, they're actually pretty dang good. <clears throat> yeah, they're pretty dang good. They're available. Uh, EG-18s, I believe. Is that yep. correct, Micah? EG-18X. Yep. I think X is the military simulation. There you it, go, It puts yeah. out almost as much as an M18 yep. or just about the, as much. It's yeah, impressive. and they're a little smaller, lightweight. I mean, they're, uh, 
they're, they're not waterproof, yeah. but they're, it's a great option. You know, you can get them. And we basically use that as a visual cue. Once we got into kind of our um, assault line, we basically throw the, through the smoke and that's telling Bravo team to, to take some steps. Yep, so on our side, we're gonna be shifting fire. So obviously we're gonna be having Alpha team assault through. So we can't be firing at that same location that they're gonna be moving through. Because then we're gonna, that's gonna, we're gonna be killing our own guys. So you shift fire, so you still wanna keep good you know shots on around that location by shifting fire you're moving in opposite of that team that's assaulting through so they still hear those zips those cracks those impacts and that um and still believe that they are under accurate suppressing fire now once we're able to shift fire that allows for our guys then to move through and assault through that location now if i'm not mistaken you did bounding correct yeah we did a bound uh just because the terrain is so open when we got to our our uh, position up there we saw that it was basically flat terrain we have no there's no, really no defilade to move to, uh, so I decided to call uh, bounding. So basically we just, you know, IMT'd one person, moves at a time, the other covers, so we're actually our own supporting element uh, at that time as well. So we're starting to put accurate fire on enemy positions while the other guy moves and then we're swapping so we can move forward more. Once we had, uh, you know, once we'd gotten further into the assault, we saw that, you know, hey, the enemy forces had been dispersed mm -hmm. or eliminated, uh, that's when we would stop utilizing those movement techniques. And then we would just get up and start moving through the, the impact area. Mm -hmm. Now, as we're going through the impact area, this is a point at which we're gonna be lifting fire on yes. our side. So the supporting element lifts fire. So we literally are going to aim our weapons up over the top of the heads of everybody. And we're gonna to continue to fire. Again, those whips, those snaps, the, the sound of the rounds going overhead is going to be at least something if there's anybody left at this point as our assaulting element is coming through to keep them suppress as best as we can. Yeah. So again, it's a dicey situation, but um, it's been proven time and time again to work well. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the that's the beauty of kind of, as long as we're fighting with projectile weapons, mm -hmm. uh, even if you know these tactics, if they're executed correctly against you, you're just not gonna have a lot of options because they're all about eliminating options for the opposing side. So even though you know that in an ambush, if they were trained by Western, you mm -hmm. know, forces, they're gonna be doing certain things, or an assault, they're gonna be doing certain things. If they're doing it right, they're still just gonna eliminate your ability to, to make any decisions that are, are good. Absolutely, and so once you guys assaulted through, you hit the LOA, if you wanna explain that, because a lot of people have no idea yeah, what sure. LOA stands for. Yeah, so LOA, uh, it, it gets confusing for guys, it doesn't need to be. LOA is, it can be decided by the lead element. Uh, it could be terrain based. I mean, if you come to, the Grand Canyon, right? You, you can't like fight through the Grand Canyon, so it's an LOA. Uh, it could be objective based, all sorts of things. But essentially, we're calling LOA and we're letting uh, all of Which our stands for limited limit advance. of advance. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, it's limit okay. of advance. These acronyms they kill people. Yeah, we're limiting the advance of the element. So I'm telling everybody stop where I am, and then they're all going to get online. And uh, there's some after action stuff mm -hmm. that we're going to be doing online, like getting uh, you know casualty reports, mm -hmm. ammunition count you know, all of that kind of stuff, uh, enemy KIA, we're gonna start exploiting that, you know, those things as well. There is a ton that goes so into, much. we just had an ambush, we assaulted through, they dispersed, we killed them all. We, we are talking several more weeks of training. We don't wanna get into that because sure. again, we wanna keep this as focused as we can, but understand that there's a lot more at this point. Again, sure. we showed you one scenario for a near ambush, but this is very well a situation that you could have been in and these were all good sound decisions that were made in order to limit the options of the ambushing force. So now that we've shown you near ambush, we're going to go ahead and show you far ambush. So let's get to it. Let's do it. So setting the scene here, we're about two thirds way up the hill right now. We're traveling along. You can see we're in this nice little draw right here going towards the hilltop over there and over that hilltop is getting into friendly territory. So the enemy has ascertained that we're going to be using somewhere in these foothills, most likely along this one right here as our route of travel back home. So they are set in place. They are far. They weren't able to quite get in place. This would be more on the lines of a planned ambush because they knew we were probably going to take this route. So you can see right up there, that is our ridge. So when we start taking fire right here from across this valley, we're going to need to get into a safe area which is going to be over that hill due to the fact that we are on the military crest right now. Contact right!
سجمك Okay, we're gonna be talking about fire ambushes. So we're talking about anything beyond uh, that grenade range. That, that can encompass a huge, huge number of scenarios. So you have to understand, once again, we're only gonna be able to show you one possible outcome, one possible tactical decision that we're making here. So in the scenario that we have right here, we are post that near ambush. We are now egressing through the hillside, trying to get back to friendly territory and we are traveling along the military crest. Do you want to define the military crest for our audience right now? Yeah, sure, the military crest, if you think of a ridge line, uh, which is where we never want, it's almost like a road. We don't ever want to be on top of the ridge, skylighting ourselves, creating a backdrop. Uh, the military crest is coming off of the ridge, uh, you know, depends on the terrain, mm -hmm. but uh, however many meters you would go. You're just gonna come off the side and you're gonna follow along the ridge line still, but below the ridge line itself. So what I've always told people is like one third down or two thirds up the hill, somewhere yeah. around those, uh, you know, that approximate parameter. But so we are post that near ambush. We survived it. We're trying to egress back to friendly territory. And on the way back, the original enemy that we hit has figured that this is the most likely route that we'll probably be going through these foothills right here and they're going to initiate a far ambush. In this case, they're gonna be very far. So we're gonna show you one possible outcome here, and essentially what's going to happen, uh, as you can see in the video, is once we took that initial fire, we're gonna prone out as we usually do, because we start taking rounds near us. So we prone out, we are able to ascertain that the enemy is quite far, probably beyond about 400 meters. So at that point, what are we gonna do, Adam? Well, we, you know, we're gonna have to measure what's going on uh, in terms of contact, is the fire effective or is it not effective? And is our purpose to, you know, make contact and then assault through or to make contact and then uh, egress? In this case, we're gonna try to leave. We're trying to leave this engagement. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're gonna, you know, react to contact, get online, and then we're gonna break contact essentially. And we're gonna use a technique, uh, bounding technique. Mm -hmm. is what we're gonna use. Yeah, so we're gonna be doing successive bounding. Yep, successive bounding, which means that we're gonna be falling back to each other each time we bound. And uh, we do that just as a command and control. Uh, you can also alternate, you mm -hmm. do alternating bounding where you would go past each other each time. Uh, so yeah. So when we do this, uh, we're basically gonna do it until we're in a position that's more safe. So right now we're on the hillside that is exposed to the enemy, which is somewhere in the hills right here. And we're gonna be going on the opposite side of the hill. And then at that point, we're gonna reassess what's going on, figure out what the best course of action is, and that would be a completely different video. Yep. So we're gonna show you guys what that looks like at this point. Let's do it. Okay, so we just reacted to the far ambush. Uh, what's, what's rule number one, cardio? Yeah, cardio, <laughs> it's very important. Very important. Physical so, fitness in general. <laughs> physical fitness, uh, downing up the hill sucks, but that's uh, it's part of the uh, LARPing, LARPing life. Yeah, you know? well, it's never a place you wanna find yourself. You don't wanna find yourself uh, in contact you know, and having to fight either uphill or even having to egress uphill is, is really not a good place to be. So obviously once we got up and passed over the ridge right here and we were out of the sight line, what we're gonna do is we're gonna reconstitute, uh, figure out what the game plan is going from there, whether we continue on to friendly or whether we think there's gonna be another ambush. There's a lot of things to think about at that point. And again, this isn't what we're gonna be going into right now. We're just talking about surviving the ambush. Yeah. But you have to understand it's not over once we've broken that contact. Like those guys still had that last sight line here. So like things we always talked about in zero is like time, distance, terrain, yep. right? So like at that point, we got a boogie. We yep. gotta get going. We gotta get out of here. So you're already smoked. And Keep this going. is actually just the start. Yeah. That was the warm up, you know, to the actual workout. So now we're, you know, we're gonna try to egress a couple of kilometers, put a terrain feature in between us, you're not uh, potentially yeah, set up our own ambush. Exactly, uh, counter ambush, <clears throat> that was a big thing. We went to totally different, uh, getting really into the weeds. Point yes. is, get on the Stairmaster, and get fit. What yeah. were some other things we could have done down there that we didn't show? Yeah, uh, so we totally could have used, and we should have used, if mm. it's available to us, uh, smoke yep. for screening. Uh, Any time that we're in a in an ambush that is not near, uh, we want to pop smoke in front of us 
And even if we're making decisions on an attack after that, uh, it's just gonna screen us, right? If we throw smoke out, they can't see you, you start dispersing, so, you know, moving, again, extending that base out wide, you're basically gonna eliminate their ability to, to pick you off one by one. And the thing to always remember is that depending on the person that you're engaged with, remember that thermals do see through smoke. So just because you have smoke up doesn't mean you're magically have the wall of invisibility. Technology has changed, but it's still a really good idea because probably not everybody's gonna have thermal or have them, especially during the day when they're not quite as effective. Sure. So it's a really good thing to do to pop smoke. So Absolutely. As, a, as a quick note there. Um, obviously there's a lot of different ways we could have handled that situation. Being out in a field, we would have handled it differently, being in an urban situation, but doing successive bounding to get outside of a kill zone, especially in a far ambush. Sure. Absolutely a thing you could and would do in many cases. Yeah, absolutely, especially this case right here. So we've kind of gotten to the end of our how to survive an ambush. As you can see, guys, we could barely scratch the surface for you because we just, quite frankly, like a five hour video on ambushes, like we'd love to make it, Micah, we'd love to make it. Yeah, but nobody would watch it. Nobody would watch it. <laughs> no one so would we're, watch it. We're gonna compartmentalize <clears throat> this stuff and start splitting it up to make sure that we can give you these nice little bite-sized pieces of information. Get out there, you need to learn more, you need to practice more. Uh, if you're not practicing this after watching this video and practicing other things that you know, you're in the wrong right here. Yeah, get your, get your PT up. Um, get so, your PT up. <laughs> get that I'm PT gonna keep up. saying it. It's the it's the most critical component of surviving an ambush. So we're times. gonna we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, Adam, is there any any uh, good training resources you'd like to recommend to my viewers before we go? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think you know it starts with your mindset. So uh, the Ranger Handbook. I know it's kind of become no, a cliche. I, re I read it all the time. You should read it. It has a lot of good information in it, especially when we start talking about battle drills. It's kind of mm -hmm. the the holy bible of battle drills. Um, and then, you know, any of the, there's a lot of training centers out there. I'm gonna shamelessly plug Darcy. Of course. It's, it's where I like to yeah. like to train. Uh, Rich Mason has a, a lot of information, especially when it comes to uh, tactics and mm -hmm. command and control. Uh, so if you can get out to any of those courses that, that he offers, that's a good place to definitely go train. Absolutely, and you can't forget uh, this little company called Onward Research. Onward Research. They're, they're gonna they're, be running training out at this, uh, this very range, in fact. Yeah, for sure. So, Things to think about, kind of beautiful, just uh, inhale that <coughs> nature and touch grass, all important things, and turn to grass, yeah. don't forget Achievement about that. Achievement unlocked, and you touch grass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Achievement unlocked. Like, yeah, so onward so research so as well. <laughs> so guys, uh, we're gonna end it right here. Get out there, train. We appreciate you guys so much, and we have nothing else for you. Final thing for you is going to be dad advice. So every time our, uh, mm -hmm. our, our favorite person gets to do dad advice, that's Adam today, yeah. Adam Thank dad you. advice. Dad advice. Uh, are we talking about like real dad advice? Yeah, yeah, whatever like for you kids? want to give, like for people, kids? Yeah. No, just anything any, for, lost people. Yeah, lost, lost people. Lost people. Lost people? I don't, I'm, I'm confused, dude. What am I supposed to say? Well, like uh, for example, we told, uh, we've told people to spend repent and turn to Christ. Or yeah. Spend oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I find, yeah, dad advice. I find that uh, hating yourself every morning is is probably my go-to so when you get up you walk into the bathroom you know you're urinating just remember that you're you're incredibly flawed and uh just do better because you're you're not better so there you go disappointed dad <laughs> disappointed dad one. yep <laughs> you're, you know, if you lose the baseball game you're dead to that's me it. yeah you're yeah. dead yeah you're not good enough is basically what i'm saying <laughs>